Speaking of 90s rappers that used to make listening to mainstream hip-hop awesome, my other request for my challenge is for Busta Rhymes with Wuha Got You All In Check. And oh my god, I love Busta Rhymes! Seriously, next to Missy Elliott, he had the best videos and the most off-the-wall and crazy lyrics. Busta was a total package sort of thing. He was a spectacle, and the 90s was the perfect time for him to exist. You couldn't have Busta Rhymes without the outlandish videos, the hair, and the crazy beats. The man had such charisma and unimitatable style. He was featured on a song where the only thing he said was, Oh my god. And usually I'm the type of person who thinks it's a waste of money to pay a rapper for just doing a chorus because, I mean, you, you could have done that yourself. But nah, in this instance, it totally works. I could not imagine Q-Tip or Five Dog treating the phrase, oh my god, with the emphasis that Busta Rhymes has. And although I'd argue that lyrically, Wu Ha isn't his best song as he would get better with wordplay and style later on, as well as get worse with bowing to commercialization pressure later on. A problem that I, like many problems in hip hop, blame P. Diddy for, but that's another episode. But for real, let me show you this crazy ass video. I love Hype Williams' unique video directing style that got jump started here, with the fisheye lens, the saturated colors, Buster Rhymes bouncing everywhere like he's made of rubber. It all fits perfectly. This couldn't have fit with any other song from any other artist. Look at him, stomping around, breaking tables with lit candles on them, wearing ridiculous color-coded outfits, shouting at kids, flailing his arms randomly. There's even a shot that shrinks into itself, just because, yeah, why not? Too many rappers are afraid to come off as uncool to do something like this. And I love how Buster Rhymes just dives right in. This is the kind of party music that I like, the kind where the rapper actually sounds like he's having fun. And it's one that definitely matches the energy of the song. Now, if you've noticed, I haven't really brought up the lyrics themselves because, well, there's not too much to highlight individually. Like I said, this isn't really his best song, and he'd evolve more lyrically as time would go on. But this is where we were introduced to his style of a whole verse rhyme scheme, where every line in the verse ended with the same rhyme sound. So that's cool in and of itself, but other than that, it's more about the attitude than any overt tongue twisters or head scratchers. Well, except for that one. Did Busta Rhymes have a movie deal contract in 1996? But other than that, this is a song that knows very much what it was. Basically, if the Looney Tunes had a vaguely Jamaican rapper, this would be it. Coincidentally, in a later music video, they actually put a little title card sequence at the beginning similar to an old school Looney Tunes short. Oddly enough, that was the one that sampled the Psycho theme. Yeah. As a shorty. Actually, now that I think about it, wasn't Buster Rhymes on the Space Jam soundtrack? I would not have imagined his hair looking any less crazy in a Looney Tunes tie-in. You know, the 90s really was a perfect time for Busta Rhymes to exist in. Now I got you gas on super unleaded fuels. Give me fuel, give me some space, your excuse. You know, it, it, if I were to be that guy when it comes to analyzing lyrics, and I am. I think it's cool that he had that little line about giving him some space, because the song that's being looped is actually called Space by Galt McDermott. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here it comes. I love it! I love it when artists do that! I don't know about you guys, but for me, I find it fascinating how someone can go through their vinyl collection, listening to songs, and then just happen across a fraction of a solo on an obscure song that sticks out to them and makes them want to sample it. It, it. This is awesome sampling to me. It's like taking a huge picture and cutting out a small portion of it and then making that part the big picture. And people need to do that more often. Too many times I've heard samples that were obvious and unnecessary, L like this song. <laughs> It's like, yeah, we know where this riff comes from, and you know that we know where this riff comes from, so why did you use it other than for some cheap immediate nostalgia points? This could have been replaced by any other sample and it wouldn't have made a difference. Now, this is different from hip-hop covers, which is basically where they take the original chorus and the original theme and build off of it, like with Candy by Will Smith. It's like, yeah, you know what it's sampling, but it's using it in order to expand on the topic in the rap verses rather than just exploit the recognizable riff. On the other hand, a beat sample like Wuha has a great pop to it. There's a certain ingenuity that comes from cutting out a piece of an unassuming electric organ solo to make that five second clip the star of the show. That's what I call having a good ear. But going back to Wuha, I'm not gonna lie, as much as I do like it, it's not something that I would ultimately rate highly. If anything, I give it a three out of five. 
if nothing else then for the beat the infectious chorus and buster rhymes manic energy but i don't know lyric wise i think it needed a little something else you know something a little dirtier oh yes the collaboration that the world didn't know that it needed Buster Rhymes and Old Dirty Bastard in their prod colliding on a track to just go bonkers together. And I'm the dirt dog, can't This song is deliciously demented. It outcrazes the original by a mile and makes me wish ODB and Busta had an album together. Look at him in those strange twin jackets, weird backgrounds, and ODB kissing that frightened woman's arm. You were never gonna see this stuff in another music video. Yeah, whereas I give the original a three out of five, this one gets a certified five out of five for the type of manic, uncontrolled collaborative energy that only these two combined could have harnessed. For real, y'all need to stop this video and go listen to that one right now. I can't do it any justice here. Interestingly enough, they also use the sample for this beat, and in a move that I can't say I've ever seen any other remix do yet, they just rewound the original sample to the beginning and use that part. Now that is awesome. But of course, along with an unbelievable sample usage, there comes an unbelievable lawsuit. That's right, Buster Rhymes got sued for using... <laughs> Not for the actual sample itself, but because Busta Rhymes said the phrase, Woo-ha, got you all in check. Because it came from another song, Eighth Wonder, by the Sugar Hill Gang. Now, this is kind of funny to me. Because first and foremost, that line was said by Big Bank Hank. And if you don't remember him from the Sugar Hill Gang, he was the one on Rapper's Delight who said this. Check it out, I'm the C-A-S-N, the O-V-A, and the rest is F-L-Y. Now, as some of you sharp listeners out there might have noticed, that's not how you spell Big Bank Hank. No, that line, and in fact, this whole verse, can be attributed to a rapper named Grandmaster Cass, who went by Casanova Fly at the time he wrote that verse. Because Big Bank Hank stole his verse without asking, and in fact, to this day, has not paid a dime for using it. So for the group literally responsible for the most famous rhyme bite of all time to be suing Buster Rhymes in 2012, that- Wait, wait a minute, 2012? This lawsuit was filed in 2012, and the Buster Rhymes song came out in 1996. Okay, that's bullshit. Look, if it took you more than 15 years to find out that a top 10 hit song used your music or lyrics, at that point, you shouldn't be allowed to sue them. But yeah, overall, the original is cool. Definitely check it out. But if you want unbridled madness, check out the remix. And that's pretty much all I had to say about this. I'll catch you later.